Hi, I'm Lindsay Stewart. I'm the owner of Glam Expressway. We are at 145 Front Street, right in the heart of Dumbo. I didn't necessarily set out to be an entrepreneur. I don't think there is any overnight success, you know? You start with the idea and then you work through the fears of, can I do this? Is this practical? Well, I always liked fashion and makeup. And then living in this neighborhood, noticing that there really wasn't any retail. I knew that there was a space for the moms and the singles. This fits real nice. Mm-hmm. Just waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that everything that you go through in life is really a learning experience. I was working in banking, I was selling mortgages, the market crashed, there was a lot going on there. Everything kind of prepares you for your journey, whatever that may be. When I saw that this block had a vacancy, I, I found out who, who was the rental office. And that's who I contacted about, you know, trying to get in. And it took a year, it took a year. It's funny that I own a boutique. I never really worked in retail. I kind of segued into starting my website, which I launched and I was selling really small, things that I could ship from home. This is really what propelled me into starting this business, so I still rely a lot on that. Sunglasses, always a great seller. The jewelry and accessories. I love big statement earrings, so I have a lot of that. The hats, body scrubs, some luxury candles. And I found when I first opened up the store that small sales, they weren't a huge commitment for people to kind of test the water. That's another thing I, I recommend, you know, have different price points for your customers too because someone might want to buy a high-end bag for their gift for their wife or their spouse or whatever and another person might want to do just some earrings and some sunglasses. There was a meme once that said, once I have God and Google, I have everything I need. It's real. Uh, YouTube, Google, I've watched so many YouTube tutorials to figure out how to do things. Um, it's really amazing because other generations that didn't have that before, we really have information at our fingertips. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. <laughs> I started off in economics and hated it after doing what, maybe two years of it. And then I switched from economics to business. And um, I, it was just one of those things I, I felt like business is something practical that I would use in my life. So I, I decided to do that. But as I said, at that point of time, I really didn't have the expectation or the, even the idea to open up a boutique. Well, people that I network with and spend time with that I try to learn from that have way more superior education than I have, a lot of what they've told me is that um, a lot of that, not to discourage anybody from school, but a lot of that is um, the benefit is the, the people you meet, the networking, and the resources you get. Although I am pro-school, I think everyone should go to school. <laughs> I'll put that little bit there in because I don't want to be misread, but um, yeah, if you have self-determination, there are a lot of things you can learn on your own. And listening to your own intuition and your own self and your own heart, make sure that whatever you're doing makes sense. A lot of people think, oh, I don't need to do a business plan. I know how I'm going to do this. But a business plan really helps you to answer a lot of the questions along the way as far as, am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to afford it? If I don't start making money in the first few months, how long will I be able to sustain myself in the business? A business plan helps you answer all of these questions. Once you've done your business plan and you've proven to yourself that this plan can work, don't listen to any of the noise. Any negativity is just noise. I will say the first year, weekends, holidays, all of that gets sacrificed because you know you have to you, you you have to nurture your business. You really do. It's just a lot of ongoing work when you are the buyer, the accountant, the customer service person, the you know everything. You kind of have to be obsessed with what you're doing. And I was thinking about the type of people that are in Dumbo. Um, they're artistic and funky and edgier and everything like that. And, and, and that's kind of my vibe as well. My shop really isn't for the wallflower who wants to fade away to the background. It's for that woman who has something to say and wants to stand out. Can't please everybody. 
This is a two-piece set, and um, it's very out there. It's not for everybody, but I have found that when I try to please other people, I don't do well. But when I follow my instinct and my gut, pieces sell. If you're a mom, it's hard because your business is one of your babies. I launched the website when I was pregnant with my second daughter. Um, people think that children hold you back, but in my circumstance, I find that they actually motivate you and propel you to do more. My husband has been everything with just picking them up from school and being with them until I get home and just rearranging our whole process so that it, it, it works for us. Or what do you do to take care of yourself and nurture yourself? Oh God, that is what falls to the wayside every single time because the day that I, I get time off, there's always running around to do, like running to the bank or, you know, laundry or, you know, when I get any time off, I want to dedicate it to my kids because you have that mom guilt that you took time off and then you didn't spend it with them. And that's not relaxing and resting with kids my age. You know, they want to be active. They want to do things. So that takes planning and execution. I do take some time to just zone out. So some people define self-care for themselves would be going to get a massage or going to get a facial or going, I don't know, going to eat their favorite meal. Um, anything that takes energy like that, it's, it's, I, I just want to do nothing when I'm taking time off. So that might be the most ridiculous reality TV that you don't need to think about. You don't need to watch the episode after the episode before. You can just watch this episode and be entertained or just lay in bed, sleep in. That's what I need every now and then. It's difficult because some days you're not in the mood and you don't feel like it. But, you know, it's just about really making people feel welcome when they come in. It takes energy. It does. <laughs> but I enjoy it, so... She kept saying, I hope it's a girl. He so. like so he mom. was nice. Always yeah. close to mommy. Yes. <laughs> so, take care. You All too. Right. Enjoy Let's the neighborhood. How much time did you put into branding your company? Mom came to visit and she said, you already have a website. You already have clients from, you know, when you were a makeup artist and you already have a following from your website. She's like, why would you change that and start over? And I took my mom's advice. It made it so easy from when I was getting the signage for the store, the, the bags, the wall decal. Like you can ask yourself simple things like what would be the theme song for my company or what colors or what, what kind of message or ideology am I trying to put out there. So everything in the store is new and then the two darker racks are vintage. Where are you ladies from? My niece and two nephews are half Russian because uh, my cousin my is American. My neighbor is from Jamaica. Ah, you know, you know our great. culture is very similar. We're very over the top. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's funny because being a mixed person and living all over the place, you know, I, I you might identify yourself a certain way, but you can't control how other people perceive you. I haven't had any outright like racism or anyone being mean to me but I've had people that have underestimated me. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's like little nuances but that, that you can tell when you're, when you're being underestimated, you know? I do have one specific example that I don't tell a lot of people because I don't like to talk about negative things, but this was like a very hurtful experience for me, but it's funny the way it all turned out. Um, there's a showroom in Manhattan, and they carry a lot of European brands and um, really beautiful things. Um, and I actually have bought some of the pieces before in my personal life. There's a shoe company that I, I have their shoes, I wear their shoes, I love their shoes. So one of the things that I wanted to do opening the boutique was I definitely wanted to sell their shoes. So um, we did all the negotiating and everything kind of online and on the phone and everything. And I put down a deposit for the shoes, thousands of dollars. It was kind of uncomfortable for me to do it, but I knew I'd be able to sell it. So I scraped it together, sent the wire transfer, everything, and um, ended up going to the showroom to look at some other stuff. And 
uh, I ended up getting an email that my order was just canceled and they returned my money. And, um, you know, I, it was hurtful. It took a long time for me to get over it because I was thinking about it back and forth for a long time, like, why, you know? I mean, they were okay with everything until they met me. It's funny because they ended up contacting me like a year later to try and kind of prospect. And I was like, either they don't remember who I am or I don't know. I did. I tried. Um, I uh, I was told that they did not want to be um, the highest price point in the store, which they weren't. So it didn't really make sense. My message definitely falls back on to female empowerment. You know, I am a Jamaican Canadian living in New York. You know, this is a tough business to jump into. And um, I just want to, women to know that, you know, there's so much that we can do. We're taught to think so small, but there's so much that we can do, you know? So I tend to fall onto that a lot. Yeah, this is one of our most popular graphic tees, the Girl Power Tee. I've restocked it three times. I've gotten three different colors because I had like a wait list of people after a week of it selling off asking for more. I think with this climate, uh, political climate, and everything that's going on, um, I think people, it's a nice subtle way to say what you believe in. You don't want to be called the B word and you don't want to be considered you know, a hard, you know what, you know? So, you know, you still wanna be that person you are. You wanna be a nice person, but at the end of the day, if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. And if it doesn't go with what you're doing, and you know, even though you wanna help people and see people succeed, not at the expense of yourself, it's difficult, especially as a woman, because sometimes men will try to, not bully you, but, um, it's, it's, it's just different. I know that there are certain men in this industry that have dealt with me in a way that I don't think they would deal with another man. Hard for people to understand this, like why don't you just say no, but you know, when someone's in front of you and they come by every day or you know, it, it's, it's difficult. If you have to be around someone, you don't want toxic energy and you don't just want to say no. Men do it all the time and they don't get called the B word. This is, difficult because um, as you can tell I don't know if you can tell but I am a people not I am kind of a people pleaser it's a part of the business I like to make everyone happy I talk to everyone that comes in here I usually end up making relationships with my customers so it's hard for me to say no when I don't want to do something so you know I've had to find ways of putting distance between the request or uh, just you know, sometimes I've fallen back on making excuses like, I gotta ask my partner, which I don't even have a partner. Uh, I love this Python midi skirt. I think it's so cute. Another thing, I'm gonna be bringing in a ton of rompers because this just came in a few days ago and it's been selling like crazy, insane. Come, come, come! Totally fun. This is Alexandria Hello. from the Dumbo Bid. Great neighborhood. She helps our businesses thrive in the neighborhood. <laughs> I love the Alchemist because it just goes to show that you you need to listen to yourself. You need to listen to yourself. You don't know what's around the bend. And I rely on this every time when I have a fear, I try to run towards it. It's so easy to just be like, oh, I don't wanna do this, it's scary, it's crazy, it's too hard, it's gonna to be too difficult. The most rewarding things are literally are on the other side of fear. It's scary and there's a lot of anxiety that goes into doing something that you don't know if it's gonna work, you don't know if it's gonna be good or not. And I have one specific day that I will never forget. My first February, I was at a birthday party and as I said, the anxiety was just building, building, building. And it was a Saturday and I had been depending on the weekend. I said, I know, I know the weekend will be good. I know Saturday will be good. And I can, you know, I checked the register from my phone and I think we had sold like maybe $60 for the day. 
and I just wanted to cry. And I started sweating. I had to go in the bathroom and wash my face. I was at a children's party and my kids were half of the party. <laughs> so it wasn't like I could hide my emotions too much, but I really started having a panic attack and I really had to like get it together and just pull myself together and just go with it. You know, you know there are gonna be highs and lows and you have to, you have to ride it out. I think entrepreneurship is really within and if you have an idea that you, you feel like is going to work and you're passionate about it, not just a blind idea that you love, but something that makes sense, like something you, you think would really work in your community or wherever you're doing it, I would just say don't ask too many people their opinions and kind of just go for it because there are always going to be naysayers. There are always going to be people who will discourage you and say, oh, well, there's a ton of that or you shouldn't do that. But if you know you have something to offer and you have your own message, then you should really just believe in yourself. I've just been rambling on and on and on and I, I don't know. I mean, I think we covered it. I hope I inspired somebody a little bit, you know. I don't know, but I'm always here. So come and talk to me and ask me questions in person and I'll be happy to share. Ha, 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 ha.